All right, so we're going to share in this video three ways to end the uh, runner chaser dynamic. This probably goes against or kind of is a different opinion to most of what you've heard. Uh, we actually had a, quite a short running stage. It was just a few months. And today we want to share uh, how you can actually shorten that and end those toxic loops that you've had throughout lifetimes with your twin flame, uh, going back and forth, uh, running, chasing, running, chasing. How can you actually end that? Uh, what we did, how you can do it too. We are Twin Flames in Union, helping Twin Flames like you into Union, so make sure to subscribe. To understand this, you need to really understand why this happens, like why there is this dynamic of repeating patterns of, you know, this person will be a runner, this person will be a chaser, and then they'll go back and forth like this. Why does that actually happen? Well, it's actually a combination of different things. So it's things like astrological influences, uh, numerology influences, or numeral... Numero numeral... <laughs> <laughs> Oh. You get the gist. DNA imprinting, past life, uh, trauma, loops, patterns. Ancestral. Uh, yeah, ancestral and archetypes. So these things, these you know variety of influences will... Oh, and also programming as well. These things will kind of play out as the default option, depending on which one's strongest or which one has the most influence on you, uh, unless you change them or unless you become aware of them. So... Mm -hmm. For example, let's say if in all of your past lives you had a pattern of attracting or looking for a partner, even subconsciously, right, that abuses you or manipulates you or, you know, doesn't want you, and then you become obsessed with them. Let's say if that's a pattern in your past lives, that's going to imprint on your uh, soul. So then when you reincarnate, let's say in this life, that's, that's just going to play out again as a default option unless you change it. So to, to end that dynamic of runner chaser, and we'll get onto that, you know, how to do that later. But you need to become firstly aware of that, that there's this, there's these different layers of programming and these kind of layers of reality that will become real unless you step in and change it or guide it in a different way. So yes, you've had several lifetimes where you've had these toxic loops uh, with your twin flame. And now we will go into uh, how you can break this toxic pattern. The first way to end a runner chaser dynamic is to listen to the science of the universe. We have talked about this before, but the reason why we keep bringing it up is because it's so important that you're not forcing something, that you're not having your ego, like let's say, uh, clutch onto a mm. uh, toxic relationship that is with not with your twin flame, or that you have these, uh, I don't know, addictions, or um, uh, let's say it's a job you're really attached to, but you're supposed to step into your missions, so you're not doing that. Uh, you're seeing signs that you should move to a certain country, uh, like your apartment might be falling to place. Everything is showing you to to move away, mm. but you're just holding on because it's comfortable. It's in your comfort zone. Then it's going to make it very hard for the universe because there's free will on this planet. So the universe can do everything they can and, and you can try to hold on. And this will, will really uh, lengthen the running stage and uh, can make it coming back on and on and on. So you really need to make sure to listen to the science of the universe and uh, surrender to it. Absolutely. And the next one is Akashic healing. Uh, this is done on obviously a level that you can't really see physically mm -hmm. with your with 3D senses, but it, you don't need to um, both be present physically and it will kind of clear up those. It will just take away one of the various influences that might be affecting your loop. So let's say if the problem for you is past life stuff, the Akashic healing is really going to help with that. If you do the Akashic healing and nothing really, or, and the dynamic continues, then it's a sign to look at maybe programming or look at your astrological yeah. influences, your subconscious beliefs, and kind of work on those as well. The best approach, and we teach this in the fast track, um, links in the description, is to do all of them. You know, just to literally just be really strategic about it and just say, okay, if the dynamic of runner chaser separation if that's being caused by let's say five different things or potentially five different things well the smartest th thing to do is to work on all five mm -hmm. because you don't know which one it is yeah so if you just work on all five by you know a process of elimination you'll figure out what what is holding you back and then pro yeah. problem solved right i mean it, it should fix itself yeah exactly for us, Akashic healing was very important because we had many uh, lifetimes together where there were toxic loops and we weren't able to unite. So we were really grateful to have this Akashic healing. Uh, we got it done by Betty Kotevsky. Uh, I don't think she is accepting any uh, private uh, healing sessions at the moment, but she has a, a YouTube channel called Twin Light Tarot that you can write down uh, where she does, um, I think, also group sessions. 
um, that could be really useful for your twin flame ascension and uh, reunion. So I think it's really important to try and manifest pure awareness where you're completely objective and you're not biased in any way. You're just looking at yourself, your patterns, your behaviors, and seeing what is the actual reality, seeing what you do and trying to understand why you do it. And then as soon as you become aware of it, then you can change it, you know? Mm. Um, but unless you become aware of it, you'll, you'll just play that out as your default behavior pattern. So yeah, I've said this before, you need to really be aware of what you do and then you have the power to change it. And it can be very difficult because yeah. it's an ego issue as well. We don't, we want to think that, oh, we're doing everything perfectly and it's other people's faults. And so it can be very difficult. And if you're finding it difficult to find out this, then I find meditation to be uh, an amazing tool for this, to, to step more into your soul. Because once you do that, your soul knows exactly what to do. Yeah. Your soul knows exactly. But we're in our mind so much and that's what society has programmed us to be, to be in our mind all the time and letting the soul just be in the background and not have much power. So try to make meditation a daily habit. I have a new app called uh, Stick, uh, Stick with CKK. And what you can set up, you can set up an anti-charity. So every time you don't stick to your meditation goal, for example, uh, they send money to a charity you don't want to. So let's say a political leader you don't follow, for example. Uh, but for me, it's really helped me to meditate. I'm doing one hour daily. You don't need to do that often. Uh, just 10 minutes per day is all you need. But that will really help you become um, more soul driven. So your soul will uh, be more uh, in power. And another another way of doing it is to become kind of like a detective. So when you react to something, and it really helps if you're mm. actually, you know, with your twin flame in a relationship physically, that you can tell them to ask you. So like when you react to something, you can have your twin flame ask you, why are you reacting like that? Like really in a purely loving way, just saying mm. like, what is the cause of this reaction? Is it um, legitimate based on what's actually happening? Like, should you be reacting this way? Or is it based on a subconscious belief you know, or a limiting belief or some past trauma that is causing you to react that way. Yeah. Or if you're not with your twin flame, then yeah, just ask that to yourself. Just yeah, yeah, you take a yourself. second after I was like, whoa, why did I react to that way? Why is this happening? Yeah. So Easier it, said than done, but it's definitely important. Yeah. Uh, or you, you, can, you can use journaling for this as well. So by the end of mm. the day, think about, oh, what happened here? Why did I react this way? With these different... Um, I call them default options, default settings. There's various different ones like astrological, mm. so societal programming. For each person, there'll be specific ones or specific influences that are stronger. So you might be more, much more strongly influenced by astrology mm. or by media, films, music, um, compared to me, let's say, or Julia, mm. right? It's, it's different for everyone. So you really need to be objective and try and step away from yourself. Like imagine you're just kind of watching your body from above you know as like which you kind of are like as consciousness yeah, yeah. from above and see okay this my body or this body say is reacting in a certain way why is that you know is mm. it because i listened to a specific type of music this morning is it because you know society or my parents or my friends tell me this is true is it i don't know it could be literally anything mm, mm. it could literally be anything but unless you trying to try and step back then you'll never realize that you'll just play out this default option so it's just like the default what would happen if you wouldn't take care of that if you wouldn't pay attention and release that let me know in the uh, let us know in the com <gasps> i'm sorry let us know in the comments um uh, if you're in separation stage or if you're in union let us know uh what are you going through on the twin flame journey